In this lecture, we will discuss Bloch's theorem for particles in periodic potential and using Bloch's theorem, we will discuss chronic penny model. So, what is the realistic potential in solids? In quantum field electron theory, Sommerfeld assumed that the electrons are moving in a constant potential field. However, multi-electron atomic potentials are complex. Even for hydrogen atom with a simple Coulomb potential solutions are quite complex. So, we use a model in finite one-dimensional periodic potential to get insight into the problem. Now, let us consider an electron in the uh, in the atomic nucleus of charge ZE. That means many materials have crystalline structure with ions arranged in a periodic potential. That means the atoms or ions in the crystal are arranged in a periodic manner. So all ions in the lattice exert Coulomb attractions on an electron. So effective potential experienced by an electron appears periodic. So let us, took, uh, let us look into this picture. That is, they, suppose there is a uh, new atomic nucleus of charge Z plus ZE. So the potential energy of the electron is given by V is equal to minus Z e square by 4 pi epsilon 0 R. Where epsilon 0 is free space permittivity and R is the distance of the electron from the nucleus. So, the variation of potential energy with the distance R is shown in this figure where uh, when a number of such atomic nuclei are brought close together to form a crystal, the potential energy of an electron is obtained by summing up the potential energies due to the individual nuclei. Thus, the potential energy as a function of R for an infinite one dimensional crystal is shown in this figure. Note that the potential energy is a periodic function of distance and atomic nuclei are being equispaced. So, the 1D periodic potential is, uh, is written as Vr is equal to Vr plus A. Now, what is the effect of this periodic potential? So, Sorringer equation for a single electron is like E h psi is equal to minus h car square 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 by 2m plus v r psi r is equal to E psi r. So, v r plus a is equal to v r which is periodic potential and the a is the translational vector that is equal to n1 t1 plus n2 t2 plus n3 t3 where t j's are the primitive lattice vectors and j equal to 1 2 3. Now what is the Bloch's theorem? So scientist F. Bloch proved the important theorems that the solution of Sorringer equation for a periodic potential must be the special form that is psi kr is equal to u psi nkr is equal to u nkr into exponential i k dot r where to the power i k dot r is represented as plane wave and the u nkr is a periodic in a that is u nkr plus a is equal to u nkr. So, U N K R has the period of the crystal lattice with uh, U K U N K R plus A is equal to U N K R. And what is the block electrons? So, electrons with wave functions obeying Bloch's theorem is called block electrons. Now, In one dimensional uh, system or crystal, the case where atoms or ions are separated by a distance A, 
we can write the condition of periodicity as Vx is equal to Vx plus Na. So, what is that? The first we should know what is Bloch's theorem. So, Bloch's theorem states that for a particle, particle moving in the periodic potential, the wave function psi x are of the form that is psi x is equal to u k x e to the power plus minus i k x where u k x is a periodic function and u k, ha, u k x has the periodicity of the atomic potential. The exact form of u k u x depends on the potential associated with the atoms or ions that form the solid. Now, main points in the proof of Bloch's theorem in 1D that is u psi x is equal to u k x e to the power i k x and u k x is equal to u k x plus a. So, to prove that, let us consider in, uh, we, uh, let us con we assume that the lattice has the form of a closed ring of n atoms. If a is the separation between the two consecutive atoms, then psi x is equal to psi x plus Na. Now, the symmetry of the rings implies that we can find a solution to the wave equation that is the psi x plus A is equal to C psi x psi x. So, if we apply this translation n times, we will return to the initial same atom position because this is uh, assumed as a ring. So, psi x n n a, psi x plus n a is equal to c to the power n psi x is equal to psi x and the c to the power n is equal to e to the power 2 pi n i where n is equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. So, the c is equal to e to the power 2 pi small n i by capital N equal to e to the power i k a and from this relation we can prove that k is equal to 2 pi small n by capital N a. So, this is the block wave vector we can define that k is equal to 2 pi n by capital N a. And now, we can write, rewrite that psi x plus a is equal to c psi x equal to e to the power i k a psi x. Now, using the Bloch's theorem, in 1931, scientists Chronic and Penny had developed the Chronic Penny model. So, Bloch's theorem allows us to calculate the energy bands of electrons in a crystal if we know the potential energy function. So, in this chronic penny model, the periodic potential energy curve is approximated by square wells. So, let the period of the periodic potential be A plus B and by using Sorringer equation, we can write that there are two boundary conditions that for minus b uh, greater than x uh, uh, less greater than x and greater than 0 that means x value in between minus b to 0 the potential energy is v0 and the while for the x value in between 0 to a the potential energy is 0. Now this is the Sorringer equation for this chronic penny model and the boundary condition using the boundary condition and the blocks theorem uh, we can write down these two equations. So, the solutions of Sorringer equation require that the wave function and its derivative must be continuous across the potential boundaries thus at the two boundaries which are infinitely repeated now using the blocks theorem. For a periodic potential with period A plus B, we can write that psi A is equal to psi H minus B to the power I K A plus B. And there are some mathematical calculations. So, 
A, B, C, D are the constants. So these constants are determined in such a way so that the swap function psi and its normal derivative d psi dx must be single valued and continuous. These equations are homogeneous and will have a solution other than a, b, c, d equal to 0 provided the determinant of the coefficients a, b, c, d vanishes and using some complex mathematical calculations we can find out the expression that is uh, written here. So in the left hand side there is there is a uh, cosine uh, in the right hand side there is a cosine functions and uh, in the in this in this equation actually this is the transcendental in nature and may be solved graphically the LH side of either of these equations is plotted as a function of energy and the right hand side of the equation that is cos k a and which lies in between plus 1 to minus 1. So the physically acceptable solutions are possible when the left hand side is lies between plus minus 1. The corresponding energy values are permitted and other outside of these limits that is plus minus 1. The physical solutions are not possible and the corresponding energies are forbidden. Now we will we have to understand what is the Brillova zone. So the Brillova zone is defined as the Wigner's primitive cell in the reciprocal lattice. So in the direct lattice there is a Wigner's primitive cell this is the smallest volume occupied by the atom and Brillova zone is defined as the the first Brillova zone is the smallest volume entirely enclosed by planes that are perpendicular bisectors of the reciprocal lattice vectors drawn from the origin. And the concept of Brillova zone is particularly important in the consideration of electronic structure of solids. That means in the first fig figure that in the direct space the direct lattice is defined as A and whether in the reciprocal lattice space the reciprocal lattice vector K that is suppose 0 to 0 OP. OP is the distance of K and if we just bisect this so the value of NM is K is equal to minus pi by A2 K is equal to plus pi by A2. That means in this figure so first Villeneuve zone is equal to K is equal to plus pi by A2 minus pi by A that means K is equal to 2 pi by A and the second Brillova zone is corresponding to k is equal to 4 pi by a and so on. Now, in the chronic penny model, we can, uh, we can draw the reduced zone representation or the periodic zone scheme. So the left hand side figure is periodic zone scheme that is the in this figure, there is a, uh, this graph is plotted is a function of uh, energy with a function with respect to the energy. So, here the reduced, uh, the period zone, uh, zone scheme that means in the first below zone, the EK curve is looks like that manner and there are some allowed energy bands. Uh, whether the cos k value is plus minus 1 in this region the in the below zone these are the allowed energy states and outside of this region it will be forbidden. So now the zone theory or band theory conceptions are coming here. So up to this the chronic penny model has been ended. Thank, thank you.